Purihin ang Panginoon. And I praise God for this opportunity and privilege that I'm able to share His uh, Word. And tunay nga po na nakakabuti ng ating Diyos. Kaya naman, bago ako magpatuloy, I'm asking you to uh, share this message or just click the share button and share it to your wall or to your friends through messengers or I ask you na patuloy na at sama-sama natin ipahayag ang mabuting balita. And I believe in my heart that the Lord is going to do wonders, wonderful things for you, for me, and for us today. He's so good. Amen? Hallelujah. At bilang mga anak ng Diyos na kanyang pinupuno na kapangyarihan, let us declare our covenant tool to the Lord in Luke chapter 4, 18 to 19. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because He has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and recover of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, and to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. The Lord who gives this favorable year is the Lord Jesus Christ. He is the Messiah, He is the Savior, and He is the Anointed One. Amen. Kaya kapag sa umagang ito, sama-sama tayo dumulog sa mabiyayang Diyos. Hilingin natin ang kanyang karunungan, kaalaman, upang lalo pa natin maintindihan ang magandang bagay na kanyang naisipahatid sa ating lahat. Let's pray. Father, we are so thankful for another week, another Sunday that we are going to study your word together. I pray that as the families gathered together, as each brother or sister um, stays at his or her home, Panginoon, kahit siya mag-isa, physically, pero alam po namin, nandiyan ka, nangunguna ka, sumasama ka. Thank you for the word that is being uttered by your servant. Let the pure words alone be declared in our midst. We acknowledge that it's not by might nor by power, it's by your spirit. Father, we thank you. We thank you. Holy Spirit also for you who anoints, who gives wisdom and understanding. Let your name be glorified, our King, our Lord, our God, in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and Amen. So magandang magandang umaga po. Good morning everyone. Good morning Canada. Good morning Philippines. Um, good evening Philippines or saan naman uh, napalig ng mundo that you are watching. Isa mapagpala pong araw sa inyong lahat. I'm Pastor Jeremiah Corpus from Jesus the Anointed One Church, Fort McMurray, Alberta, Canada. So, maraming maraming salamat sa pag-tune in. And don't forget again, please like or react and share this message. Praise God. This message I entitled, Remember Me This Way. Remember Me This Way. Maybe it's not a song. But the reason why I entitled this message like in this way is there's one thing I want you to do, to do and that's to remember. 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 So our text for today, I'm going to get from Isaiah chapter 41. But I will read this part, verse 8, up to the following verses, which is 16. It says, But as for you, O Israel, you are mine, my chosen ones. For you are Abraham's family, and he was my friend. I have called you back from the ends of the earth and said that you must serve but me alone. For I have chosen you and will not throw you away. In verse 10, Fear not, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. See, all your angry enemies lie confused and shattered. Anyone opposing you, opposing you will die. You will look for them in vain. They will all be gone. In verse 13, I am holding you by your right hand. I, the Lord, your God. And I say to you, 
don't be afraid. I am here to help you. Despised though you are, fear not, O Israel, for I will help you. I am the Lord, your Redeemer. I am the Holy One of Israel. You shall be a new and sharp toothed brushing instrument to tear all enemies apart, making shaft of the mountains. You shall toss them in the air, the wind shall blow them all. Blow them away, whirlwind shall scatter them, and the joy of the Lord shall fill you full. You shall glory in the God of Israel. <clears throat> glory to the Lord, and let will be blessed upon the reading of His Word. Six months ago, kasi we were so excited about what 2020 may bring to us. We planned, we prepared ourselves, we, pre we prepared our families, we wrote plans, plans and plans. We thought that everything would run smoothly because January, everything was good. We have new surprises, we have new blessings <clears throat> until February and then before the March ends, pandemic was declared. So everything has changed. They say there is a new normal, but I know there's still longing in our hearts that, oh, I want the old ones, the old ways, the old things, the things that I'm used to do, the freedom I have in everything that I enjoyed. Some of you, throughout this six months, because in two days, this month will be ended. Some of you, throughout the past months, or even the, at this moment, some of you faced lots, or facing lots of trials and troubles. Some of you climb, or still struggling, how the mountains of problems be overcome by you be overcome by you. So each of us has issues, issues and cases in life. Maybe you are tired on facing it and you're trying to run away. Some of you are heavily burdened and already exhausted. You exhausted also the means, the ways on how to solve them. Some of you hit the bottom rock or you reach the dead end others may be losing hope and faith but the question is what's the best thing to do before the next six months come or before we experience and other things to happen so what is the best thing to do so what do you think are the things that the Bible tells us, the Lord wants us to do? Half of the year is almost finished, and we are going to venture to another six months. So how are we going to face the another half of this year, or the next six months of this year? Are we going to apply the same strategies? we used in solving our cases, our problems, our issues in lives? Are we going to continue our own ways or are we going to try or continue to God's ways? So, Isaiah chapter 41 was a, is a prophecy. It was given by Isaiah and many scholars said that this prophecy was already told and done. Tapos na. Being fulfilled, it was fulfilled, some of them, at the time of Cyrus the Great and in the following years. However, however, even this, a part of the history of Israel has already happened, still, the eternal message, the wonderful message presented by this piece of history is still valid and applicable for all of us. 
for you and me who believes in God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Are you excited to receive this? So this passage mainly was written, actually really written for the nation of Israel. But what is true for Israel is true of us, each as in Christ. Dahil nasa kay Kristo pa, because we are in Christ, was all about Israel is for you. Now, let us study what this chapter or this part of Isaiah is teaching us that we could apply in our lives as we face the new chapters of our lives. Ano nga ba? Ano nga po ba ating may apply sa ating uh, uh, pagharap sa panibagong buwan ng taong ito? What are the things that we would learn and we should do? Okay? If you have your pen, if you have a notebook, you can write it down, you can share this. Okay, Isaiah gives us important reminders here for us. And I have three reminders for you. First, remember. Remember to listen in silence and present your case to God. Remember to listen in silence and present your case to God. In verse 1, I'm going to read from the message translation and the living Bible. Sabi doon, quiet town, far-flung ocean islands. Listen. Sit down and rest, everyone. Recover your strength. Gather around me. Say what's on your heart. Together, let's decide what is right. And the living Bible says, Listen in silence before me, O lands beyond the sea. Bring your strongest arguments. Come now and speak. The court is ready for your case. In Tagalog version says, Sinabi ng Panginoon, Kayo mga mamamayan sa malalayong lugar, Tumahimik kayo. Tumahimik kayo at makinig kayo sa akin. Kayong mga bansa, Lakasan niyo ang inyong mga loob, Lumapit kayo sa akin at sabihin ang inyong mga reklamo. Magtipon-tipon tayo at pag-usapan natin ito. Mga kapatid, friends, my brothers and sisters in the Lord, do you have arguments? Do you have issues? Do you have cases in life? How are you going to deal with that? How are you dealing with those things? Voices and noises pollute our ears and minds. Sa maingi ng mundong ito, we were so bombarded, or we're still bombarded by noises. Tinatawag natin noise pollution. Physical, even the pollution, the noise pollution inside our mind, our brain, and our heart. So because of too much issues and crisis or cases in our lives, we seek advices to many. We read, we watch, we seek counsels or advices. At some other times, we keep filling our minds with thoughts, lots of thoughts, which are products of what we felt, what we saw, what we heard, what we acquired from our environment. Sa dami ng boses at ingay na ating naririnig, sa dami na ng sakit na ating naramdaman o nararamdaman, yung mga salitang di maganda na ating narinig, na ating natanggap, ang ating pandinig ay nakakaroon ng kalyo. Our hearing became callous. Nasa tingin natin, okay, tunay na narinig ko ang Diyos. Tunay na narinig ko si Lord. Pero ang totoo, tinig mo yon, Tinig ng mga tao sa paligid mo ang naririnig mo. Sa totoo lang, maaring ikaw ay sarado ang puso, ang pag ng iyong puso sa Diyos. Tinig ng yabang, tinig ng kataasan, tinig ng dipagtanggap sa pagkakamali o pagkukulang, tinig ng dipagpapatawad, tinig ng mga bagay na mga nagpapahirap sa iyo, 
mga pinipili mong pakinggan kasi yun ang komportable sa'yo. Mga pagi na gusto mong pakinggan kasi yun ang palagay mo sa tingin mo ay maganda at nakabubuti sa'yo. But the Lord is telling us this morning, quiet down, listen. Listen in silence before me. Tumahimik kayo at makinig kayo sa akin. Pinakinggan nyo ng lahat. It's time pakinggan natin ang Diyos. The Bible says, my, he my ship hears my voice. Amen? My ship hear my voice and they follow me. If we belong to the flock of God, then we listen to Him. We are hearing His voice and we are following Him. Are you part? Do you belong in the flock of God? So have you ever wondered how to hear God's voice above the noise of daily life? Alam mo, sabi ng scriptures in Job chapter 33 verses 1 verse 14, For God speaks in one way and in two, though man does not perceive it. Do you perceive or are you perceiving God's voice? And God's message for you. Isaiah chapter 30 verse 21. And your ears shall hear a word behind you saying, This is the way. Walk in it. When you turn to the right or when you turn to the left. Kung narinig niyo po ang tinig ng Diyos, lalakad ka doon sa sinasabi niyang lakad. Hindi ka lalakad doon sa gusto mong lakaran. In the past months, paano ka lumakad? Sinundan mo ba ang lakad ng Diyos? Dumaan ka ba sa puso ng Diyos na lakaran mo? Or you made your own way? That's why you get hurt. That's why you put yourself in more troubles. Bago pumasok ang panibagong anim na, tao, anim na buwan sa taong ito, ang taong ito, listen. Learn to listen in silence. Pigilan mo, takpan mo ang tenga mo sa mga tinig ng mga bagay, ng mga tao na hindi ayon sa Diyos. Jeremiah chapter 33 verse 3 Call to me and I will answer you and will tell you great and hidden things that you have not known. Tumawag ka lang, dilingin ka ng Diyos. Saan sagutin ka niya? Tumatawag ka ba sa Diyos? O kahit tumatawag ka, may narinig ka bang nais niya o tinig niya? Wala ka nang marinig. Kaya naman, pinapalagay mo lang yung narinig mo ay tinig mismo ng Diyos. At nais niya yung lakaran mo. God speaks to give us instructions. To lead us in the way we should go. And to tell us what is in His mind. What's in His heart. Napapakinggan mo ba ang tibok ng puso ng Diyos? Alam mo ba? Ang tibok ng puso ng Diyos ay ikaw. Yung mabuti para sa iyo. Yung makakabuti at makakapagpasaya sa iyo. Yung makakapagbigay ng kalwalatian sa pangalan niya. Yun ang nasa puso ng Diyos para sa iyo. But you couldn't able to grasp or understand the message, the word. Because you are enjoying or already used to the outside and the inside noises. Sanay ka na sa ingin ng mundo. Sanay ka na rin sa ingay sa loob ng puso mo. Kaya hindi mo marinig ang gusto ng Diyos. Kapatid, kung gusto mo maganda ang iyong lalakaran sa darating ng mga panahon, makinig ka sa Diyos. Listen in silence. This morning, this, the message for us is this. Quiet down. Listen. Listen in silence. Listen in silence before God. Tumahimik kayo. Tumahimik tayo at makinig sa ating Diyos. Sabi ni Lord, manahimik kayo. Makinig kayo sa akin. Tama na yung pakikinig sa iyong sa boses ng sarili mo. Tama na yung pakikinig sa boses ng kung sino-sino. Listen to the voice of truth. The voice of Jesus. The voice of the Word of God. God speaks in one way. And it's time to perceive what He is really saying. Huwag kang mag na hindi mo narinig sa Diyos. Huwag kang gagawa ng mga hakbang hindi ayon sa instructions ng Diyos. 
Huwag mong pagbasehan ang iyong pakiramdam. Huwag mong pagbasehan ang iyong mga naiisip. Huwag mong pagbasehan yun. Pagbasehan mo kung ano sinasabi ng Diyos ayon sa kalooban niya sa kanyang salita. Kaya di mo maintindihan ang sinasabi ni Lord kasi minsan hindi ka naman nakikinig. You're not listening. Puro reklamo, puro basura ang mga nakaharang sa pandinig ng iyong puso. Sometimes, or most of the times, we forget to listen. We are also busy and have so many things to do. Things to worry about, things to distract us from just stopping and listening. Ang dami. Give a moment to stop and listen. Sabi ni Lord, may problema ka? May bagyo sa buhay mo? Be still. Be still. Be still and know that I am God. Be still and know that I am God. Paano ka nga makakarinig kung hindi ka naman tumitigil sa kasasalita? Paano ka nga makakarinig sa Diyos kung pilit mong nilalagyan ng takip ang iyong tenga? Alam ko na yan. Narinig ko na yan. Palagay ko itong tama. Kapatid, the ship of the Lord hears him. His voice, and she or he follows him. Are you his ship? So before you present your arguments, learn to stop and listen. Sit down and rest. Everyone, sabi ng Isaiah, recover your strength. Pagod ka. Kasi kaiisip mo ng kaiisip ng kaiisip ka, papakinig ng ka, papakinig kung kanikanino. The Lord says, gather around me. Say what's on your heart. Be honest to God. The Lord says, together let's decide what is right. Kung magdi-decision ka, dapat narinig mo sa Diyos at yung decision na yun, dapat tama. Huwag kang magdi-decision that you will regret someday. Never commit any decision that you will be regretted someday. The Lord said, let's decide. Alam mo, sa lahat ng desisyon, napakalaga. Narinig mo sa Diyos ang desisyon? Sapagat yun ang tama. Huwag kang magdidesisyon na hindi tama. Bring your strongest arguments. Come now and speak. The court is ready for your case. Kapatid, handa namang makinig ang Diyos eh. Lakasan niyong loob niyo, lumapit kayo sa akin, sabihin niyo ang inyong mga reklamo. Praise God. Sabihin niyo ang inyong mga reklamo. Sabi mo sa Lord. Pero, magtipon-tipon, pag-usapan nito. Kaya if there's some disagreements, pag-usapan. Pag-usapan na shut ang doors ng mga boses na galing sa labas. Kundi galing lang ang boses na pakikinggan sa Diyos. A joyful and peace-filled life is not dependent on our circumstances. It has already been secured by our risen Savior, mga kapatid, and can only be accomplished by consistently engaging in two-way conversation with the Lord. So our lives are full of decision-making. Those decision-making opportunities that requires us to utilize our direct line access to Christ. Kapatid, kailangan mong gawin yan. Makinig sa Diyos. Makipag-usap sa Panginoon. So after you sit down and listen to what's in your heart, speak. Sabi mong reklamo mo, nakikinig naman si Lord eh. The court is ready for your case. Pwede mo sabi sa Lord lahat ng nasa puso mo, kaso ng puso mo. Sabi ni Lord, handa ako makinig. Kung makikinig ka muna sa akin, makinig ka muna sa Lord. Ay kapag present mo na yung kaso mo sa Diyos, if you presented your case to God, this is the question. Are you ready to take His verdict, His judgment, His advice? O matapos mo marinig ang advice niya, ipagpipilitan mo, ay mas gusto ko pa rin yung gusto ko. Yung issues at cases ng buhay mo sa Sabi ni Lord, sa akin mo dalhin. Okay? At pagkatapos, let's decide what is 
right. Left decide what is right. Minsan umaabot yung mga kaso natin sa kung saan saan at kung kani-kanino. Pero hindi mo nadalas ninyo minsan sa harap ng Diyos. Pag-usapan natin ito, sabi ng Lord, let's decide what is right. Kaya mga kapatid, let's decide what is right. Sa lahat ng mga panahon, alam ko, marami pa tayong harapin ng mga ganyang uri ng pagsubo. But let's learn to listen and decide what is right by listening to our God. Alam ko mga kapatid, this means dapat kasama natin si Lord sa ating mga desisyon. Kaya yung mga next decisions mo sa susunod mga araw, isama mo si Lord. Para maging tama ang mga desisyon. Dapat nakalinya sa desisyon ng Diyos, nakalinya sa kanyang salita ang mga desisyon mo. Kung ito ay desisyon mo lang at batay sa salita ng tao, ibig sabihin kapatid, hindi yan tama. Sapagkat isa lang ang tama. Si Lord, He is the truth. Ang salaan ng ating mga desisyon ay hindi ang standard ng tao. Hindi ang pakiramdam mo. Hindi ang pakiramdam ng kung sino-sino. Hindi ang advices ng kung sino-sino kundi ang salita ng Diyos na minamahal mo. Minamahal mo ba si Lord? Gawin mong bakaya ng iyong mga desisyon ang salita ng Diyos. That's the first thing to do. Remember to listen. Remember to listen. Listen to our God. Then present your case. But, let His will be done after you presented your case. Can you do it? Type Amen if you can say, Yes, Lord. Mangyayari yung kalooban mo. Your will be done in my decisions. Second thing. Remember who is God and who is He in your life. Praise God. Remember who is God and who is He in your life. Sa nakaraang siya, uh, anin na buwan, kapatid, anong naging role ng Diyos sa buhay mo? In the past half of this year or the previous years, what was the role of Jesus, of our God in your life? What are the things he proved to you? What are the things he was able to do? What are the things that, he's, that he was able to accomplish in your life? Ano-ano ba? Paano mo nakilala ang Diyos? Nakilala mo ba ng, ng gusto at tuluyan ng Diyos sa mga nakaraang panahon? Remember who is God and who is He in your life. Let's talk about our God. Are you a believer of God? In verse 4, it says, Who has done such, such mighty deeds, directing the affairs of generations of mankind as they march by? It is I, the Lord, the first and the last. I alone. I am He. Sino ang gumawa ng lahat ng ito? Kapatid, who did the mighty deeds in your life? Who performed wonders and miracles? Who healed you? Who provided your needs? Who was with you in times of trouble? Who is the one who sustained and protected you? Is he God? Then keep remembering. Baunin mo to sa pagpasok ng panibagong buwan at panibagong tao, uh, part of the year. Baunin mo at ilalag ilagay sa isip mo, sa puso mo, that there is God. Sino ang nagpanukala ng lahat ng mga mangyayari mula pa nung una, nung unang henerasyon? Hindi ba ako? Sabi ni Lord, hindi ba ako? Akong Panginoon ay naroon noong sinimulan ng mundo. At naroon din ako hanggang sa katapusan nito. Mula sa simula ng buhay mo hanggang sa ngayon na sa darating, nandyan ang Diyos. Huwag mo siyang kalilimutan. Kaya huwag mo siyang itsaplorehan. Huwag mo siyang ilalayo. Huwag mo siyang i-exclude. Don't exclude Him in all your decisions. In everything that you will do. In all your plans. Acknowledge Him always. Kapatid, did you experience His mighty deeds? 
Or are you still experiencing his mighty deeds? And are you excited to experience those mighty deeds of the Lord? Did he direct you in the past? Who started your life? Who sustains your life? Who knows the beginning and the end of your life? Who promised that he has a great future? That you have a great future? Is he the Lord? Our God? Hindi po ba? God! Kaya huwag mo siyang lilimutin. Don't forget who is our God. Don't forget who is your God. Don't forget the God of your family who loves you so much, who perform wonders, who perform mighty deeds, who is still doing wonders in your life. The same God who was, who is, and is with you is the same God who will be with you in the next coming months and years. The same God who will help you. Is He worthy of your praise? Kailan man, kapatid, di kailan niwan ng Diyos. I remember the song of Bishop Art, Kailan man, di mo kami iiwan. Kailan man, Di mo kami pababayaan. Do you remember that song? Sabi doon, Ikaw aming gabay sa bawat sandali. Sa'yo kami nabubuhay pag-asang tunay. Is He really your God? Kaya ka ba nilang sabihin? Ikaw ang Diyos na dakila, Ikaw ang Diyos na siyang simula, Iyong binigay ang buhay ko. Remember your purpose? Upang purihin ka, Itataas ang alan mo, Kailan may di ka nagbabago. Do you know that He's not changing? Everything in this world will change, Or keep changing. Pero hindi siya nagbabago. Ano sabi niya? Ano alam mong pangako niya? Pangako mo sa akin. Sasamahan mo ako, kapatid. Ang Diyos na sumama sa atin from January 2020 hanggang ngayon, the Lord who protected us from the COVID virus or from anything, from any trouble, from any calamities in life is the same God who is going to be with you. Amen. Tapos so, yung napakasarap na sabihin mo yung sabi nung awit, Pasasalamat ko sa'yo, buong buong puso, papuri pagsamba, ang alay ko sa'yo. Kapatid, remember who is God, who was with you, who is with you, who will forever be with you. Remember that He is having plan for you to bring you with Him in eternity. Huwag tayo maging short-sighted. Ang buhay mo hindi pang dito lang sa lupa. Yung situation may may katapusan niyan. Your situation, what you're going through has an end. But your life will be forever with God. So keep remembering Him. Amen? I believe I know at one time or another, most of us have been gripped with fear. Fear. We have been afraid that things which happened in the past can hurt us in the present. We have been afraid of what people think. We have been afraid of what people would do. We have been afraid of the future. We have been afraid of circumstances. We have been afraid of ourselves. We have been afraid of any number of things, but remember what the Lord says. I am with you. Do not fear. Alam mo, one of the forms of fear that takes in us or controlling people is that of worry. When we are afraid of something, we worry over it, forgetting what the promise of God. Kapatid, huwag mong lilimutin ng Diyos. Kailan kanya ipinahamak? 
Kailan ka niya hindi sinamaan? Kailan ka niya hindi tinignan at pinagmasdan? Remember Him and remember who He is. As we continually worry, we make life miserable for ourselves and for those who have listened to us worry. Alam mo, hindi naman nakakabless yung nakikita na nag-aalala. Hindi rin nabibless ang Lord kapag nag-aalala ka at natatakot ka. Hindi pa naman nangyayari, sobra ka na lang paranoid minsan. Nalilimutan mo na minsan ang prinsipyo ng Diyos at ang kung sino siya sa, at kaya niyang gawin sa buhay mo. Listen. Listen to this message. He's God. The same yesterday, today, and forever. Alam mo na yung truth na yan? Nakala mo. Bumalik ka sa tamang paglakad dyan. Alam mo, the ironic things about fears is God doesn't want us to fear, but He longs us to fear Him. Ano sabi niya sa Luke chapter 12, 45? And I say unto you, my friends, be not afraid of them that kill the body. And after that, have no more that they can do. But I will forewarn you whom you shall fear. Fear him, which after he has killed, has power to cast into hell. Yes, I say unto you, fear him. Fear God. Respect, honor God. Kapatid, we fear God when we trust Christ as our Lord and Savior. Amen? Do you trust him? When we fear God, we need not fear anything or anybody. Kaya ano mang nakikita mo sa dulo-dulo dyan, sa pagpasok ng mga susunod na buwan, huwag kang matakot. Kung may takot ka ng Diyos sa puso mo, kung kilala mo ang Diyos, irerespeto mo siya, mamahalin mo siya, igagalan mo siya, pagkitiwalaan mo siya. Kapatid, no, God is originally speaking to Israel here, but I believe that this verse is applicable to all born-again Christians, to all who believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. Notice, please, that God tells us not to fear. But this command, this is command, when we fear things, God tells us not to fear. Because when we fear, we are disobeying God. Remember Him who said, do not fear. In this passage, He said, Fear not, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you, I will help you, I will uphold you with my victorious right hand. Pag sinasabi niya, fear not, for I am with you. Sinasabi niya, God is telling, I, I am present. Kapatid, our God is present in your situation. When he said, be not dismayed, for I am your God, he's saying, I am a personal God of you. I'm a God personal. Personal akong tutulong sa'yo. Hindi niya kailangan mag-send ako sino sa ino. Miss mo siya. He can do that for you. She said, I will strengthen you. Sino bang makakapagpalakas sa'yo? Sino pa? Yung bang mahina? Hindi. Ang makakatulong sa'yo, the one who can strengthen you is the one who is strong. It means God is strong. God is powerful. He is able to help you. He is able to strengthen you. So keep remembering Him. Amen. When He said, yes, I will help you, sinasabi niya, I am a practical. I can. I am able. Do you believe He is able to do what He promised? When He said, I will uphold you with the right hand of my righteousness, with my victorious hand, He's saying, I'm not permanent. I'm not changing. Kung nagawa ko tang tulungan, if I was able to help you before, I was able to help you today, I'm able to help you at the time comes. At the next come, months, weeks, days, moments of your life. Kapatid, remember Him. Amen? Fear not, for I am with you. Amen? Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. Dapat kilala mo, who is that I am? Amen? Dapat hindi mo nalilimutan, you should not forget what I am, that great I am, can do to you. Amen? Don't forget Him, but remember Him. Remember also who He is. Kung kilala mo ang Diyos na nagmamahal sa'yo, dapat wala kang takot sa mundong ito. Hindi dapat matakot 
sa mundo o sa sino mang tao sa mundong ito. Remember Him. Remember Jesus. Remember His rose. Ano bang ginampanan niya sa buhay mo? He's a loving Father in you, kapatid. Amen. And this is the second thing. And this is the last one I want you to remember. Remember. Okay? But before that, I want you to, I'm going to emphasize this. Remember our God's power, His sovereignty, He's in control, His plan. He is able to do what He promised because He is faithful. Amen? And this is the last thing. Remember yourself. Remember me. Sabi, Lord, remember me this way. Kilala mo pa si Lord. He's the healer, He's the provider, He's the sustainer, He's the protector. He is your God, the Savior, the lover of your heart. Now, what will you say to yourself? Kilala mo ba ang sarili mo? Kapatid, remember yourself. Baka sa dami ng pinagdadaanan mo sa buhay because of lots of circumstances or problems or struggles or chaos or storms that you face, you started to forget who you are. You started to forget how God designed you and what's the purpose He has for you. Dahil sa dami ng laman ng puso mo, sa dami ng tindi ng ingay ng mundo, ingay ng sa nasa puso mo, nalilimutan mo kung sino ka na talaga at kung anong pagkatawag at pagkakalikha ng Lord sa'yo. Remember yourself, my dear brothers and sisters. Remember you. Remember who you were. Sino ka ba dati? Bago mo nakilala si Lord, before you got to know Jesus, who were, who, what kind of person you are? Asan ka? What you were doing? What struggles? What failures? What mistakes? Saan ka nakita ng Diyos? Saan ka pinulot ng Diyos? Remember who you are. Baka sa sobrang pagpipilit natin magustuhan tayo ng iba because we want others to be pleased. We want to confront, uh, conform with others. We forget who we are. The child of the wonderful, amazing, loving God. Kung noon, kaaway ka ng Diyos, alipin ang kasamaan, kontrolado ni Satan, gumagawa ng kalooban ng masama, kapatid, sino ka ngayon? When you receive Jesus Christ, you have been given the right to be His child, right? You are His child. You are His child. You are His child. And remember who you will become. Ano ba nakikita mo? Nagagawin pa ng Diyos sa buhay mo? Excited ka ba? Kapatid, dapat hindi nawawala yung excitement sa puso mo na maraming gagawin ng Diyos na bago sa buhay mo. That your life will not be ended right now because of the circumstance. No! God is going to do new things in your life. Amen! Let's go back to the issues or cases of your life. Are those things really define your word? Yung gamma decision mo, is that you? Ikaw ba talaga yan? Yan ba talaga yung gusto mo? Yan ba talaga yung gusto ng Diyos sa puso mo? Sa buhay mo? Remember your purpose. Remember who you are in Christ. Are the thoughts you have in the mind of you and the heart about yourself really define the true design of God in your life? Kapatid, baka natatakpan ng dakadiliman ng maling pakiramdam at paniniwala ang liwanag na meron ka galing kay Jesus. Remember, you are special. In verse 8, But as for you, O Israel, you are mine, my chosen ones. For you are Abraham's family, and he was my friend. I have called you back from the ends of the earth that you must serve but me alone, or for I have chosen you and will not throw you away. Sabi ng message, Israeli, servant kita, Jacob, 
first choice kita. Kay, uh, ikaw ay descendants ng kaibigan kong si Abraham. I pulled you in from all over the world, called you in from every dark corner of the earth. Saan ka bang madilim na sulok kinuha ng Diyos? Remember who you were or where you have been. Remember who you are. God's telling you, you are my servant. You are here to serve me. I picked you. I haven't dropped you. Israel, palta mo yung pangalan mo, kapatid. Kaya sinabi ko sarili ko, Journal, ikaw ay lingkod at pinili ng Diyos. Sabi mo nga sarili mo, yung pangalan mo, tapos sabihin mo, ako ay lingkod at pinili ng Diyos. Say it, I am chosen and a servant of the living God. Ikaw yan. That's the real you. Amen? Tinawag kita, kinuha kita sa malayang dulo ng mundo, kapatid. Ganun ang pagmamahal ng Diyos sa'yo. Ikaw ay lingkod, pinili ka, hindi ka tinakwin ng Diyos. Alam mo, sometimes it's hard for us to think of ourselves as a special because when we are having problems. Special ba ako? Dahil may problema ako. But it's helpful and healthy to remember that God considers us to be special. Special ka. Amen? Actually, dahil sa Panginoong Jesus, hindi ka lang servant eh. Sabi doon, ikaw ay kanyang kaibigan. Amen? Kaya naman bilang mga likod ng Diyos, let us love our spiritual family. Let us treat everyone that we meet with that dignity. Amen? If we are disciple of Jesus Christ, if we are saying you are disciple of the Son of God, then let us do what He wants. God takes care of His own. Hindi ka magpababayaan ng ating pinaglilingkuhan. Wala na tayong best na boss, kundi si Lord. Siya lang yun. And don't forget, and we know that all that, th that all that happens to us is working for our good if we really love God and are fitting His plans. Kapatid, hindi po, our God is not a responsible employee. Or employer, rather. He cares for you. He cares for you. If that, the thing, you are His servant. Pero hindi lang yun eh. First John 3, 1. It says, What marvelous love the Father has extended to us. Just look at it. Tingnan mo. We are called children of God. That's who we really are. Huwag mong lilimutin yan. Anak ka ng Diyos. Mga anak tayo ng Diyos. Magkakapatid tayo sa Diyos. Iisang pamilya tayo. Amen? Romans 8, 16-17 it's adventurously expectant. Sabi doon, greeting God with child, like, what's next, Papa? I'm expectant. Can you say to God, what's next, Papa? What's next, Tai? Tatay? What's next, Father? Are you excited to say, Father God, what's next? I'm a child. I believe you already performed wonders in my life in the past months. What's next, Lord? I'm too excited for that. Amen? You know what? The Spirit of God touches our spirit and confirms who we really are. Sabi doon, we know who He is and we know who we are. Father in children relationship ang meron tayo, kapatid. Grabe po ang Diyos. Amen? You may be thinking, oh, hindi naman ako Abraham's seed. But you know what? Even we are not Jewish, Abraham was the father of faith. And those who have faith in Christ are the seed of Abraham. We are Abraham's spiritual descendants. Kaya ang tawag sa atin ng Diyos, hindi lang po servants. After sa Galatians chapter 3, 7 to 9 says, Abraham was a friend. As he said, we are the friends of God. Remember who you are. You are the loving child of God and you are a friend of God. Who has the purpose to serve Him for His glory and for your own benefits. Kapatid, don't forget that. Amen. Jesus is your friend. God is your friend if you know Jesus Christ as your Savior. You have no better friend than Jesus. Okay? Remember, you are strengthened. And who is the one strengthening you? The Lord who is strong, who is powerful. Sabi niya, no need to fear. I am here. I'll give you strength. I help you. I, I, I uphold you steady. 
I keep a firm grip on you. Alam mo, hindi ka naman binibitaw, binibitawan ng Diyos eh. Sabi niya, Fear not for I am with you. Do not be dismayed for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Kapatid, pinalalakas ka ng Diyos. I am upholding you. Huwag kang mangamba, pinalalakas ka ng Diyos. Palalakasin kita at tutulungan, iingatan kita sa pamagitan ng aking kapangyarihan na siya makapagdita sa iyo. Kapatid, grabe kang importante sa Diyos. Mahal na mahal ka ng Lord. You are not going anywhere without God today. Uulitin ko. You are not going anywhere without God today. Hindi ka pupunta kahit saan, hindi ka sasamahan ng Diyos. Not only are you not going anywhere without God today, but we need not be dismayed or panic because He is your God. Amen? Kapatid, huwag mo limutin ito yung promises ng Lord dito. I will strengthen you. Promise ng Lord yan. Sa bawat si Sotushim in every situation, remember He is the God that does the impossible. He promised, I will help you. Are you facing financial crisis? God says, I will help you. Are you facing a family crisis? God says, I will help you. Are you facing a work crisis? God says, I will help you. Are you facing a health crisis? God says, I will help you. Are you facing any relationship crisis? God says, I will help you. Ano mang hinaharap mo? God says, I will help you. Remember who you are. Sometimes we are not asking for help. He wants us to ask. Sometimes we ask for the wrong reasons. That's why we are not receiving anything. Sometimes we ask for help and for the right reasons, but we lack faith. Kapatid, tangmayo tayo ka nga dyan. Tanggalin mo na yung maskara mo. Go back where you are. Dapat dun ka. Huwag kang maglagay ng alias sa buhay mo. Huwag mo nang kunin ang old names mo. Bago ka na. Kilala ka ng Diyos. Kilalaanin mo siya. Remember who you are. Remember, I will uphold you with my righteous, victorious right hand. Hallelujah. Kita mo kami ng Diyos. Sobrang laki ang kapatid. I was watching a documentary about the universe. When the earth was zoom out, tapos lumaki na lumalaki, we're just, hindi uh, lang, isang dust. Sobrang liit natin kumpara sa thousands, sa billions of galaxies in the world, in the universe. Imagine mo kung gano'n kalaki ang Diyos. Amen? And he says, I will uphold you with my righteous with victorious hand. What did you do for your children? Di ba kapag di naman makalaka, di ba inaalala yan mo? You are you are held, you help them up when they are not able to walk. Let me tell you, my friend, my beloved in the Lord, in this life, with, with all its problems and challenges, I'm still learning to walk. But I praise God because He said, I am, up, I am upholded in His mighty hands. May mga bagay hindi mo kaya kung paano mo ito lalakata harapin. Kung mag-alala, andyan ang Diyos nagsabing tutulungan kita. Hahawakan kita sa iyong kamay. Ako mismo ang maghahawak sa iyo. I intend to let God hold me up. I intend God to hold me up. May mga bagay talaga hindi ko naman talaga kaya. But I intend God to hold me up. Will you intend God to hold you up? Let's not be like some children who sperm to get out of parents' house food crust. Yung mga nagwawala ang bata. Huwag ka na magwala sa Diyos. Walang may tutulong yun. Mapapagod ka lang. Let's willingly put up those hands saying, Father, Abba, Papa, please hold me up. Can you say, Pa, Lord God, Father God, please hold me up. Hawakan niyo po ako. Hawakan mo na sa Diyos niyan. Yung sitwasyon niyo, hawakan niyo sa Lord. Ikaw kasi yung mahawak eh, kaya ang kakagulo. Pahawakan mo kay Lord. Yung needs mo, pahawakan mo kay Lord. Yung future mo, pahawakan mo kay Lord. Yung love life mo, pahawakan mo kay Lord. Lahat. 
Amen. And this is the last thing you should remember to yourself. Remember you are superior. You are superior. You are not a tail but head. Verse 11 to 13. See all your angry enemies lie confused and shattered. Anyone opposing you will die. You will look for them in vain. They will all be gone. I'm holding you by your right hand. I, the Lord your God, and say to you, don't be afraid. I'm here to help you. Kapatid! Wala magagawa ka sa buhay mo. The enemy is a defeated foe. Sabi ng Lord, because I'm your God, have a firm grip on you. I'm not letting go. I'm telling you, don't panic. I'm right here to help you. Siya magpapalakas sa'yo. Siya magsasabing huwag kang matakot. Tutulungan kita. Kaya pati, let us admit this. We have enemy, but our enemy is a defeated one. Paano na? The, uh, Satan tries to deceive, to devour, to destroy, to discourage us. But he's a defeated foe. Thousand, two thousand more years ago. That's why don't let him reestablish his stronghold in your life by harboring anger or anything or unforgiveness in your heart. Don't be obligated. Hindi ka obligado mag-serve kay Satan because you are not his servant anymore. You are the servant of the Most High God. The victory is found in the death, in the burial, in the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. Kaya kapatid, remember, you are special, you are strengthened, you are superior. And I will end with this. And the final word says, in verse 13, Do you feel like a lowly worm, Jacob? Don't be afraid. Feel like fragile insect, Israel? I'm help you. I, God, want to reassure you, the God who buys you back, the Holy of Israel. Alam mo, kahit ikaw ay na-despise, kahit minaliit ka, parang tingnan lahat maliit ka, Kahit maliit at mahina ka, huwag kang matatakot dahil sabi ni Lord, ako mismo ang tutulong sa iyo. Ako ang Panginoon nagsasabi sa iyo. Ako ang bahala. Ako ang iyong tagapagligtas. Kapatid, kung nasa iyo ang Diyos, kung kilala mo ang Diyos mo, at alam ang posisyon mo sa Diyos, uud ka ngayon, bukas. Kasunod, sabi doon, I'm transforming you from warm to harrow. From insect to iron. Wow! Kakaiba yun na. Oo, tapos magiging isang uh, tinatawag na suyod. Alam mo yung suyod yung sa, uh, pag nagtatanim ka, nagpiprepare ka ng taniman. Nabibreak. Okay? It's a harrow. It can drag. It can blow land. It can break clods. It can remove weeds. It could cover seeds. Imagine mo yun. Pagiging uod, magiging ayon. Tapos yung parang suyod. So there, I believe that there will be greater transformation to those who will humble themselves before God. Mula sa pagiging uod, magiging kang suyod. Alam mo, kung gusto mo talagang maging malakas at may kapangyarihan, gusto mo magpakauod ka. Gusto mo ng blessing, gusto mo ng transformation, magpakauod ka. Be like a worm. Be humble before God. Tapos, from being weak to becoming strong, Tapos sabi ng verse 15, You shall be a new and sharp-toothed thrashing instrument to tear all enemies apart, making sharp of mountains. Ano sabi ng Lord? From being weak, mula sa pagiging uod, magiging suyod, tapos magiging isang, sabi ng thrashing instrument. Magiging matalas and powerful. Kapatid, ang buhay mo dapat pataas. Hindi ka dapat bumubulusok. Bakit? Kung kilala mo ang Diyos mo, kung kilala mo kung sino ka sa harapan ng Diyos mo, ang buhay mo ay paakyat ng pataas ng pataas. Pabago ng pabago. Lagi mo sasabihin, binabago ako ng Diyos araw-araw. Amen. Kapatid, makinig ka. Sabi nyo, gagawin kitang bagong panggilit, matalim, maraming ngipin. Gigilkin mo, tudurukin ang mga bundok at burol. Gagawin mo itong parang ipa, kapatid. So susunod mga panahon, Pag-ikipatuloy ng tiwala sa Panginoon, nagpasakop ka sa kalooban ng Diyos, anumang bundok na haharapin mo, magiging ipa lang yan. Magiging ipa sa paanan mo. Amen. Ganon ang gagawin ng Diyos sa iyo. Kaya magpakauod ka ha. Pang mayabang. Because, and after that, you will be filled with joy from the Lord. 
Sabi doon, and the joy of the Lord shall fill you full. You shall glory in the God of Israel. Kapatid, fear not. And if you will look at this, there are three ams, I am in the in that chapter, in the part of the chapter. I am of companionship of our God. He said, don't forget this. I am with you. I am your God. I am with you. I am your God. The Lord's telling, I am with you. I am your God. And there are I wills. The I wills not an I was of compassion. Sabi ng Lord, I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will uphold you. Don't forget that. And I will close with this. Remember, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ, remember who is Christ and remember who you are in Christ. Remember, you are in Christ. Alalahanin mo kung sino si Kristo. Alalahanin mo, ikaw ay na kay Kristo. Purihin ang Diyos. Let's pray. Father God, I thank you so much for this message reminding each every one of us to sit down, to listen, to remember who you are and what you can do, and to remember who, are, who we are as your children. I pray, Father, that your children who heard this message, who will hear this message, are being inspired and encouraged, that their faith have been strengthened, O Lord God. Thank you so much, Lord. Pagpalaan mo kailan mga buhay sa pagpasok namin sa panibagong six months of this year. Alam po namin na dahil kami nasa iyo, mula sa pagiging uod, itatas mo ang antas ng aming mga buhay. From being warm, you will make us, Lord God, a harrow into a threshing instrument. Ibig sabihin, Lord, paganda ng paganda ang estado ng buhay namin. Pa-level up ng pa-level up, Panginoon. Manatili na kaming lagi sa iyo, Panginoon. Alalahanin namin, tumayo kami sa aming dapat tayuan bilang mga pinili mo, O Diyos. Salamat po ng marami, Panginoon, sa pagkakataong ito. Bless the family of you in this church and each believer who is watching with me. Ano man kailangan nila, I declare Lord God, ipuprovide mo. Lahat ng sakit, pinagagaling mo. Lahat ng problema, inaayos mo, Panginoon. Ang solusyon na ikaw, ikaw ang kasagutan. Salamat po, Ama. Maluwalhati ka ng lubos sa buhay nila. In Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God.